Hello learners, once again I am in front of you. As you know, I am Dr. Devesh from a School of Management Studies, UP Rashi Tandon Open University, Prayagraj. As you know from last few lectures, we are discussing our very important subject of MBA program that is principles of management in which we are studying block 1 unit 3. This unit explaining various principles given by the various laureate authors of various books, founders of the real principles by their experiences in the industry or by their day to day experience. If you give your eyes on this list till now, we have discussed the contribution of Taylor, contribution of Henry Dent, contribution of Gilbert, contribution of Feol, and contribution of Elton Mayo. Today we are going to discuss the contribution of Max Weber, Chester Bernard, and contribution of Maslow. Once again, I will adopt the same process to explain you one by one. All these matter are with you, with your SLM, which is already sent to you. So, let us start with the contribution of Max Weber. Learners, as far as contribution of Max Weber are concerned, let us start with a little introduction about this gentleman. German sociologist and political economics Max Weber developed bureaucracy theory. According to him, bureaucracy is the most efficient form of organization. The organization has a well-defined line of authority. It has clear rules and regulation which are strictly followed. Weber conceptualized bureaucracy in his classical contribution. It developed the model as a reaction against the personal subjugation, nepotism, reality, emotional vicious studies, objectives, judgment, which pass for management practices in the early days of industrial revolution. Weber believed that bureaucracy provides an ideal weapon to harness and routinize the human and mechanical energy which fueled the industrial revolution. Weberian model of bureaucracy is hypothetical rather than a factual description of how most organizations were structured. It provides an ideal organization structure that is one that would be perfectly rationalized and provides for maximum efficiency of operations. Weber's bureaucracy is utopian in concept and admirable in ideal. It is characterized by specialization and division of labor. Let us briefly list down some special features of Weber's ideal bureaucracy. Now you can see on the screen I have list seven ideal characteristics of features given by the Weber. Number one, a division of labor in which authority and responsibility is clearly defined for each member and is officially sanctioned. This means, pratik vyakti jo kaam kar raha hai, ek sangathan mein, 
जिसके मध्य कार्यों का डिवीज़न हुआ है बंटवारा हुआ है कि आपको ये कार्य करना है आपको ये कार्य करना है उनके मध्य में अथॉरिटी और रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी बहुत क्लियर कट डिफाइन होती है सबको पता होता है कि इनको क्या करना है और इनको क्या करना है और ये ऑफिशियली मान्यता प्राप्त होता है इनफॉर्मली नहीं होता है अगर आप हमारे घर को अपने अपने घरों को एक संगठन के रूप में लें तो आप देखेंगे वहाँ पे भी सबकी भूमिकाएं बहुत स्पष्ट हैं पिताजी की भूमिका अलग है भाई की भूमिका अलग है माताजी की भूमिका अलग है और सबके रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी और अथॉरिटी अधिकार और जिम्मेदारियाँ भी पहले से पता है लेकिन वो कहीं लिखित नहीं है उसको कहीं ऑफिशियल सेंक्शन नहीं किया गया है लेकिन जब हम बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की बात करते हैं तो वेरियस डिपार्टमेंट्स होते हैं बहुत सारे पद होते हैं कोई जीएम होता है कोई इंजीनियर होता है कोई सुपरवाइज़र होता है और सबके कार्य अलग अलग होते हैं सबकी रोल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अथॉरिटी अलग अलग होती है और ये कहीं ना कहीं टॉप अथॉरिटीज़ द्वारा ऑफिशियली सेंक्शन होती है और खूबसूरत उदाहरण अगर आप इसका देखना चाहें तो आप देखें हमारे उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार के बारे में जितनी भी व्यवस्थाएं हैं वो सब लिखित हैं संविधान में वर्णित हैं कोई ये नहीं कह सकता इसीलिए कहा जाता है कि नियम कानून से काम करें नियम कानून से मतलब कि ऐसी रोल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी अथॉरिटी विच इज़ ऑलरेडी डिफाइंड इन द बुक्स एंड ऑफिसली सेंक्शन तो ये तीनों तरह के उदाहरण मैंने आपको बताए हमारी सरकार का हमारे बिजनेस मॉडल का और हमारे घरों का तीनों एक प्रकार के ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं तीनों में भूमिकाएं हैं उत्तरदायित्व हैं और अथॉरिटीज़ हैं लेकिन घर में वो अलिखित हैं सेंक्शन नहीं है ऑफिशियली लेकिन बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में सेंक्शन होती हैं और सरकार नामक संगठन में ये संविधान में लिखित होती हैं तो उम्मीद करता हूँ कि आपको ये पहला फीचर इसका बहुत अच्छे से समझ में आया होगा क्योंकि अगर ये समझ में आएगा तभी आप आगे के फीचर्स को अच्छे ढंग से समझ पाएंगे पॉइंट नंबर टू ऑफिस एंड पोजिशंस आर ऑर्गेनाइज इन टू अरिकी ऑफ अथॉरिटी रिजल्टिंग इन चेन ऑफ कमांड देखिए ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो मैंने आपको इसके पहले फ्यूल का बताया था फ्यूल के चौदह प्रिंसिपल्स मैंने आपको बताए थे कि जब एक संगठन की रचना होती है तो वो चौदह प्रिंसिपल्स पर आधारित होती है वहाँ से लिया गया ये हरारकी और चेन ऑफ कमांड ये दो प्रिंसिपल किसी भी संगठन में रहते हैं और वो मैक्स वेबर द्वारा दिए गए ब्यूरोक्रेटिक मॉडल में भी हैं पॉइंट नंबर थ्री ऑल ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल मेंबर्स आर टू बी सिलेक्टेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टेक्निकल क्वालिफिकेशन थ्रू फॉर्मल एग्जामिनेशन और बाई वर्च्यू ऑफ ट्रेनिंग एंड एजुकेशन आई थिंक इट्स वेरी क्लियर टू यू आई नीड नॉट टू एक्सप्लेन वंस अगेन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट officials are to be appointed not to be elected mind it next administrators work for fixed salaries and are career officers next the administrative official does not own the administered unit but it is salaried official and the last one is the administrator is subject to strict rules discipline and controls regarding the ऑफिशियल ड्यूटीज फ्रेंड्स वेबर्स स्टाइल इज द आइडियल ब्यूरोक्रेसी मैनेजमेंट स्टाइल विद हरिकी इन जॉब्स विद कैरियर एडवांसमेंट्स पॉसिबल सो लॉन्ग एस यू ओ बी द ऑर्डर्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट ही ऑल्सो डिफाइन फ्यू अप्रोचेज टूवर्ड्स द ब्यूरोसी आइडियली फोर विच आई हैव वंस अगेन लिस्टेड फॉर यू ऑन द स्क्रीन इट इज ऑल्सो देयर इन योर एस एल एम सो नंबर वन इज emphasizes scientific approach number 2 encourages studies to improve work number 3 identifies principles to run organizations number 4 emphasizes pay as a motivating factor once again be careful about the fourth approach that is emphasizes pay as a motivating factor 
The Department of Defense is a classical example of this management style. However, the problem with this approach is that it is inflexible and makes people feel like they are just part of gain machine. It doesn't allow people to be creative and so have the freedom to show their own better way of doing things. The system is purely designed for productivity, not flexibility and creativity. From the above discussion, you can draw once again following facts. So, what are the facts? These facts are every, every organization that is big enough will inevitably have the elements of bureaucracy. Weber considers ideal bureaucracy as a rational solution to complexity on modern problems. Bureaucracy is neither good nor bad. It is a normative model. Weber's bureaucracy is the historical benchmark and a syndrome of social change. Although ideal efficiency as perceived and expected by Weber cannot be perfectly attained, the concept provides a prototype that is useful in explaining how most organizations function. Weberian model is an analytical tool contributing directly to the explanation and interpretation of social phenomena. Friends, this bureaucracy we can see around us, it is very clear the Weber was very positive on his model and reality is this that our life is surrounded by this bureaucracy so now we have now we have to move on another contribution given by chester bernard before starting with major contribution let's try to understand few lines about him chester irving bernard was an public administrator of usa his landmark was in 1938 book, that is, the function of the executive. See, in 1938, he had a contribution to the contribution and the the functions of the executive. जब हम किसी प्रकार के एग्जामिनेशन दे रहे होते हैं ऑब्जेक्टिव काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स उसमें इस पुस्तक का नाम आता है तो या तो पुस्तक के लेखक का नाम पूछते हैं या इस ईयर का नाम पूछते हैं कि कब किस ईयर में चेस्टर बर्नर्ड की ये पुस्तक आई थी वेरी पॉपुलर बुक द फंक्शन ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव सेट्स आउट अ थ्योरी ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड ऑफ द फंक्शन ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटिव्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस एंड द ऑथर ऑफ पायनियरिंग वर्क in management theory and organizational studies. Bernard looked at organizations as a system of cooperation of human activities and noted that they are typically short-lived. It is rare for a firm to last more than a century. Similarly, most nations last for less than a century. According to Chester Bernard, organizations are not long-lived because they, they do not meet the two criteria necessary for survival, effectiveness, and efficiency. Learners, Bernard legacy to management are these kind of things. Please see the screen. Number one, functions of the executive. Number two, authority and incentive. As far as functions of the executive are concerned, to maintain elements of the effectiveness and efficiency, Bernard described the function of the executive in his classical book, The Function of the Executive in 1938. Once again, I am repeating this. As the title suggests, he described the functions of the executive not from a merely intuitive, not merely intuitive point of view, but 
instead deriving them from his conception of cooperative systems. He summarizes the function of the executive as follows. Number one, establishing and maintaining a system of communication. Number two, securing essential services from the members of the organization. Number three, formulating organizational purpose and objective. As you know, we are discussing the legacy to the management given by Bernard and I have just discussed point number one, functions of the executive. Now come on, the point number two, that is authority and incentives. Bernard formulated two interesting theories, one of authority and the other of incentives. Both are seen in the context to a communication system grounded in seven essential rules. Because you have seen, when I was discussing the part of functions, Bernard listed number one function that was establishing and maintaining a system of communication and that system of communication is based on the these seven pillars. What are that? Number one, the channels of communication should be defined. Kaha se suchina aegi, kaha se jaegi, kisko jaegi, kab jaegi, kis madhyam se jaegi, suchina information. Number two, everyone should know of the channel of communication. Number three, everyone should have access to the formal channels of communication. Number three, lines of communication should be as short as direct as possible. Next one, competence of person serving as communication centers should be adequate. The line of communication should not be interrupted when the organization is functioning. This was the second last. And the last one is every communication should be authenticated by someone. Without authentication, no communication is allowed in formal kind of organization. So these are the seven very important pillars given by the Bernard for the organization. This is what makes a communication authoritative. Now this question is very important. What makes a communication authoritative rests with the subordinate rather than with the superior. Bernard's perspective had affinities to that of Mary Parker Follett and was very unusual for his time that has remained to case down to the present day. He seemed to argue that managers should obtain authority by treating subordinates with respect and competence only. Once again, now I am repeating last line that managers should obtain authority by treating subordinates with respect and competence only. As for incentives, he proposed two ways of convincing subordinates to cooperate tangible incentives and persuasion. He gives great importance to persuasion much more than that to economic incentives. He described four general and four specific incentives. The specific incentives were number one, money and other material inducements. Number two, personal non-material opportunities for distinction. Number three, desirable physical conditions of work. And number four and last, ideal beneficiaries such as pride of workmanship, etc. As far as general incentives are concerned, what we discussed just now, they are four, they are the specific incentives. Now we are moving towards the general incentives. Number one, associated attractiveness means based upon compatibility with associates. Number two, adaptation of working conditions to habitual methods and attitudes. Number three, the opportunity for the feeling of enlarged participation. 
in the course of events. The condition of communing with others means personal comfort with social relations, opportunity for command shift, etc. Learners, Chester Bernard, given much more to the society. But these are the crux of his contribution for our study purposes. Now, we are moving towards another contribution that is given by Abraham Maslow. So, let's listen few lines about the Abraham Maslow. Abraham Maslow was born in 1st April 1908 in Brooklyn, New York. He started teaching in at Brooklyn College in 1937. During this time, he was heavily influenced by gestalt psychologist Max Wertmeier and anthropologist Ruth Bandit. Maslow believed that they were such exceptional people that he began to analyze and take notes on their behavior. This analysis served as the basis for his theories and research on human behavior. Maslow need priority model in one of the most widely referred to theories of motivation based on human requirements. As per opinion of the Maslow, behavior motivation begins with the cradle of all processes, at least in part which belongs to the satisfaction of the requirements. According to him, a person's motivational need could be arranged in a hierarchical manner, starting in an ascending order from the lowest to the highest needs. And concluded that once a given level of needs, or we can say set of needs, was satisfied. It ceased to be a motivator, the next higher level of need to be activated in order to motivate the individual. Although the hierarchical aspects of Maslow theory are subject to question and often not accepted. His identification of basic needs have been fairly popular. Now let's try to understand it through forward stated few levels. If you look on the screen, I have listed five levels identified by the master in his need hierarchy in an ascending order of its importance. The five levels of need may be described as follows. Number one, psychological needs. Number two, safety needs. Number three, social or affiliation or acceptance needs. Tino shabda ko apiyog ho sakta hai yaan pe. Number four, esteem needs. Number five, self-actualization needs. As far as level 1 is concerned, psychological needs are the biological needs required to preserve human life. These needs include needs for food, clothing and shelter. This is a very interesting picture of roti, roti, kapda and makan. This is a human, a worker, a human being, उसकी प्राथमिक आवश्यकता होती है जब रोटी कपड़ा और मकान की आवश्यकता पूरी हो जाती है तब वो अगले लेवल पे जाता है तो आइए देखें मैस्लू साहब ने और क्या कहा इस लेवल के बारे में दे एक्सर्ट अ ट्रेमेंडस इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन बिहेवियर व्हाट फूड क्लोथिंग एंड शेल्टर we must satisfy most of their in order to exist. As pointed out by Maslow, man lives by bread alone. When there is no bread, 
साइकोलॉजिकल नीड्स डोमिनेट वेन ऑल नीड्स आर अनसेटिस्फाइड वंस दीज नीड्स आर मेट वी कैन मूव टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल एंड द नेक्स्ट लेवल इज सेफ्टी नीड्स एट दिस लेवल वी सीक अवर सेफ्टी थ्रू अदर पीपल एंड स्ट्राइब्स फाइंड अ वर्ल्ड दैट विल प्रोटेक्ट अस एंड कीप फ्री फ्रॉम हार्म Without these goals being met, it is extremely difficult to think about higher level needs, and therefore, we cannot continue to grow. When we feel safe and secure in our world, then we begin to seek our friendship in order to feel a sense of belongingness. So now you can clearly watch it that once the level one needs are satisfied. individual moves on level 2 and once the level 2 is satisfied individual easily move on level 3 that is social or affiliation or acceptance needs these are belongingness needs the needs for friendship affection acceptance relations identification with some group etc these are the needs more of mind and spirit than of physic the fourth level need is esteem needs this set of needs represents higher level needs these needs represent needs for self respect respect of others a general feeling of being worthwhile competent and personal feeling of achievement knowledge once these four levels has been completed by an individual he automatic shift on level 5 that is self actualization needs the final level in the hierarchy is called the need for self actualization according to maslow people may be in this level but very few if anybody ever masters it self actualization refers to a complete understanding of the self जब तक स्वयं के बारे में आपके कंसेप्ट क्लियर नहीं होंगे आप इस लास्ट लेवल पे पहुंच नहीं पाएंगे इसीलिए बार बार मैसलो ने कहा पीपल मे बी इन दिस लेवल बट वेरी फ्यू वेरी फ्यू नॉट एवरीवन इफ एनीबडी इवन मास्टर्स ऑफ इट सेल्फ एक्चुअलाइजेशन रिफर्स टू अ कंप्लीट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द सेल्फ एज आई टोल्ड यू to be self actualized means to truly know who you are where you belong to in the greater society and to feel like you have accomplished all that you have set out to accomplish it means to no longer feel shame or guilt or even hate but to accept the world and see human nature is inherently good defining this basic human desire and the part to react our full potential was really maslow's primary contribution to the field of psychology which eventually become known as maslow's hierarchy need and is most often displayed in the form of triangle shape when here and there when you will try to read it non learners today we have once again completed the very important three contributors that is weber bernard and maslow in our next discussion we will try to give more focus on contribution given by harzberg contribution given by lickard and contribution by contribution given by max greter and after discussion of these three thinkers we will complete our unit number 3 thank you thank you for your patience here